Welcome to South Point Church Online. Hey, we want to say hi to our local communities of St. Mary's and Calvert County. We also want to say hi to those of you around the country in different parts and maybe even those around the world. My name is Matt and I'm part of the team here at South Point. And on behalf of our amazing volunteers and staff, we just want to say thank you for joining us this Sunday. Hey, today we're kicking off a brand new series. It's about faith, fear, and then the question mark really means, what does that mean? You see, in this unprecedented season, we are talking about hearing and seeing about faith and fear more than ever before. I mean, you can't go on Facebook without seeing a meme about faith and fear. You can't go into Instagram without seeing some kind of inspirational quote about faith and fear. You can't go onto YouTube or Vimeo without seeing a message or sermon about faith and fear. Matter of fact, I found some that I have seen on social media and wanted to share them with you this morning. Uh, they're, they're pretty cool, uh, but sometimes I go, ah, and so we're gonna look at them this morning and put them up here. When fear knocks on your door, send faith to answer. And what I love about this is that it's at the beach. Now, I love the beach and the, like the see-through door. That's really cool. It's really inspiring. Let's look at the next one, which is faith over fear. Some of you may actually have this in your home, you know, like burnt into or etched into wood or painted on wood. I also like the next one because it's got stars. Let your faith be bigger than your fear. Have faith. And I love astronomy and the stars. And so that's really cool. But the next one, man, it's probably my favorite. And it goes something like this. One drop of faith can dry up an ocean of fear. I mean, if maybe we could come up with like a Christian song about oceans. Oh, oh, we did. But that one, that one's pretty cool. And then I like the next one. Faith is greater than fear. Now those are like, those are awesome quotes and I'm, I'm not making fun of them. Matter of fact, they're also very inspiring. But I bet all of us have asked a question when we've seen a quote or a meme about faith and fear. And I want to put it up on the screen for us today. And here's the question that we all ask. What did these even mean? I mean, what do those means even mean? Like, I know I've asked that question. And so if you've asked that question, I think we've all ask that question. And my hope and my prayer over the next several weeks is that together you and I can figure out what faith and fear looks like in a practical setting in this very difficult season. Now, hey, before I address faith and fear, we need to talk about the biggest problem when it comes to faith. I learned this from Dr. Howard Hendricks. You see, he was a professor at Dallas Theological Seminary for 50 years. And I had the privilege and the opportunity to learn from him in several lectures. And he called it the peril of the pendulum. And his whole idea is that human beings, you, me, we, we all have the habit of swinging to extremes. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. And it looks something like this. Is that you have the extremes on either side and kind of in the middle. And so what happens is, is to support our idea, to support our belief or the thing that we like. In an effort to support that, we will often overswing into extremes. Like, let me give you an example for me. Um, I like a football team and my football team hasn't been good for 20 years. But at the start of last season, they were predicted to do poorly. But because they're my team and I was hoping they would do good, I kind of overswung to extreme and thought they would do good. And then they had a losing season. I mean, we see this in life all the time is that we as human beings will naturally overswing to extreme. And that's why we'll only watch people that believe what we believe. We'll only read books about things that we believe. We'll only hang out with people who believe we want. It's because when we have an idea or belief, we will often overswing to the extreme. And you might be thinking, Matt, that's not true. We don't do that. Well, I would challenge you, just go into Facebook and talk a little bit about politics and you'll see what I'm talking about when I say, in an effort to support our belief, we will overswing to an extreme. I wanna give you and I a practical example of that. Uh, today, it's with guitars. Now, you might not know this about me, um, but I actually can play the guitar, not very well. And I actually used to play the guitar and lead worship uh, for Young Life. Um, and again, I can't sing well and I wasn't good. Um, but here's the thing about a guitar. When a guitar is in tune, it can make a beautiful sound. It can be really awesome. Now here's the thing about a guitar that makes a beautiful sound and it is in tune. On a guitar, a string has two ends. It has an end up here and an end back here, kind of like the extremes. And what creates the appropriate or good sound is that the strings have appropriate tension. They're not too loose on one end, not too tight on the other end. And when they are have the exact right tension, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, make 
beautiful music as long as it's played by someone better than me. Now, if it's tuned, it's great. But the reality is if a guitar is out of tune, that means it's usually too loose on one end or too tight on the other end. And the problem is, is when you have a guitar that isn't tuned correctly, well, let's see what that sounds like. Man, that sounds like my singing, not very good. That's because there's not the appropriate tension between this side and this side. And that's a great representation of the biggest issue that we'll have when it comes to faith. We'll either end up on one extreme or the other extreme, which leads me to our opening truth this morning that I bet you've experienced and I know I've experienced and I bet you've seen it in the life of other people. And I want to share it with you this morning is this. When we over swing to an extreme, we end up out of tune with reality. I mean, have you ever had a family member, a friend, someone who talks about something and you go, hey, listen, I know you believe that or like that or for that. But when you swing that far, you are not in touch. You're out of tune with reality. An example that I bet we've all seen kind of on Facebook or in the news is that some people think this current season as a result of 5G cell towers. I mean, come on. I mean, that's an overswing to an extreme that causes us to be out of tune with reality. And here's what I've discovered. What's true about guitar strings is also true of us. And so when it comes to faith, I want to ask the question, are we swinging to an extremes? And here's an extreme I've seen. I'm going to put up on the screen, uh, screen is using faith to control circumstances. Now, I don't mean to be offensive. This, this might be you. Uh, this might be somebody that you know. This, this may be a family member. Or maybe we've just seen this out and about. It's people who believe that like God is this force out there. And then as Christians, if we, if we just believe it, if we, if we just pray, if we just believe hard enough, if we fast, if, if we hold truth, if we just kind of say it, then you get a car, you get a car. And then all of a sudden we become like Christian Jedis who use God to control circumstances. And if I was honest, I don't think that's what Jesus came to teach you and I. That's one extreme of faith where we use faith to control the circumstances around us. Now there's the flip side of that. That's on the opposite extreme. And we're going to put it up here. Using faith to ignore circumstances. Now listen, to all my friends out there who like facts and who are kind of critical thinkers, like I'm with you. But sometimes I've seen people use faith as an excuse to ignore circumstances. And here's what I mean. They'll look at people like me or maybe like you who have faith in God and go, listen, faith is for people who are ignorant. Faith is for people who are uneducated. Faith is a tool to manipulate people. And I go, that's just not true because nowhere in the Bible and nowhere does Jesus ask you and I for blind faith. And we're not believing on blind faith. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about to my critical friends who like logical thinking. Did you know that scientists only know about what four and a half percent of the universe is made of? The other 95.5 percent of the universe is made up of something that they believe is called dark energy or dark matter. We don't know what it's made up of. We can't identify it. We have no idea. We are just taking a guess of what it might look at. But we know that it exists because we see its influence. And so I would ask my critical thinking and my logical friends, is it possible that in the creation of the cosmos and in the, uh, the, the kind of the complexity of life and our consciousness and morality, is it possible that even though we can't understand God, we can't see God, we can see the effects of a creator in our life? And the reality is, is that when we go to extremes, we'll either use faith to control our circumstances or we'll use faith to ignore our circumstances, which leads you and I to a question today that I think is a pretty good question. What if we're not meant to use faith, but to choose faith? And is it possible? I mean, just, just for a second. So if you could just kind of lean in, maybe if the kids are around or doing something, but I, I want you to lean in. Is it possible that faith and fear aren't actually opposites? I mean, what if in an effort to create a memorable meme, you know, faith over fear, faith greater than fear, you know, all those things, in an effort to create a memorable quote, we've miscommunicated a truth about faith and fear. Is it possible that fear is a feeling and faith is a response? I mean, this might be shopping, shocking, but what if the feeling of fear can actually lead to the response of faith? 
Now, in a season where there is nothing that is normal, it is so important that how you and I navigate faith and fear in a season, because we need to do that wisely, we need to do it in a way that is healthy, and we need to do it in a way that is truthful. And it so leaves you and I asking a question that I'd like to try to answer today, and it's this. How do we not let emotional uncertainty, because let's be honest, these are uncertain times. Like, I, I can't predict the future, you can't. So let's just be honest, it is uncertain. But how do we not let uncertainty, emotional uncertainty, lead us to unhealthy extremes? Like we're facing unprecedented season. But how do we not let that drive you and I to extremes of when it comes to to faith. And this is why I love God and Jesus so much. You know what? God knew that all of us on every continent, every generation, all human beings would struggle with fear. God also knew that as flawed human beings, that we would swing to extremes, even when it comes to matters like faith. And you know what? God addresses this very issue so that you and I aren't left guessing. Now, before we look at this, I want to describe this a little bit about this passage of scripture. It's in Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Now, Hebrews is a letter written to Jewish Christians. So they were Jews who believed in the law and the temple and grown up kind of in church, right? They believed in that, but they also believed that Jesus, because of the eyewitness accounts, that he rose from the dead, that he was the Christ, the Messiah, the one who would save the world, right? But they were being persecuted in Rome and they were being persecuted back in Jerusalem. And the reason that they were being persecuted is in Rome, everyone thought Caesar was the king. But if you were a Jewish Christian, you had a another king, it was King Jesus. And in Jerusalem, you were persecuted because the Jewish church had actually crucified Jesus as a heretic. And now you were kicked out of that. And we see them kind of writing this letter, reminding them to hold on to faith. And as they talk about faith, they kind of give us the here's the faith. And this is where we pick it up in Hebrews 11. And it says this, what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon. You know, the guy who was in the wine press, but led him to victory. Barak, remember Samson, who had strength, Japheth, and about David, David and Goliath, and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administrated justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouth of lions. <coughs> I mean, who doesn't love that? I mean, everybody wants to be a part of that, but it gets even better. They quenched the fury, the fury of flames and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned into strength. I mean, I would want my weakness turned into strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies, and women received back their dead and were raised to life again. And if you have any kind of church background, if you've ever heard anything about faith, you've probably had this passage read to you or talked to you as heroes of the faith. Look what faith can do in your life. And they're not wrong, but here's the truth. And this is where we often get misled. There's a second half of this list. And the second half of this list often doesn't get read. And so today I want to be truthful and I want to read the second half of the list as it continues to talk about faith. And it says, there were others. So hold on, there was the group that seemed to win, but there's another group, hold on, there were others who were tortured. Whoa, 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 so Pastor Matt, are you telling me that like I could have faith and be tortured? Refusing to be released that they might gain an even better resurrection? Some face jeers and flogging. You mean like people might make fun of me? And even chains and imprisonment. I mean like, you mean I could go to jail for my faith? They were put to death. You mean my faith could cost me my life? They were sawed in two. Doesn't sound like faith saved them. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins, goatskins. They were destitute. They weren't healthy and wealthy. They were destitute, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. And it gets even a little bit worse. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground. They didn't live in palaces. They lived in dirty caves. And you might be thinking, Why have I never heard of this list? Because it tells us something about these people, both sets of this list. And we see it in the next part. These were, what's that word? All. So if you're, if you're like watching or on your phone or your laptop, just type in all. They were all commended for what? What? They were all commended for their, their faith. You see, it wasn't the circumstances that defined their faith. It was who and what they had faith in. You see, it didn't matter whether the good or bad happened to them. They what? They all were commended for their faith, yet none of them received what they had been promised. Now, I'm really excited about this word none. We're going to talk about this next week when we talk about what is actually the definition of faith. But this list reminds you and I of three truths that can help us avoid 
unhealthy extremes when it comes to faith. Now, I want to be really honest here in a minute because some of us have grown up in churches where we were told that, you know, following Jesus is about health, wealth, power, and privilege. And the truth is we see in this passage that that is just not true. Jesus came and here's Jesus' own word in Mark 10, 45. It says, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to give his life as a ransom. Did you know one of the last actions Jesus took was to wash the disciples' feet and then say, this is what you're to do to others. The same way I'm going to ransom my life to bring heaven in your heart. You're to ransom your life to bring up there, down here. And I know that's not unpop- not popular, but it is true. So what I'd like to do is share with you the three truths that we can learn from this passage that will help us avoid the extremes, the unhealthy extremes when it comes to faith. And here's truth number one. Sometimes faith will lead us to overcome life's pain and problems. Listen, this is a true statement. Sometimes faith will lead us to overcome life's pain and problems. And listen, here's what I've discovered. You don't even have to be like a follower of Jesus for this to be true, right? Like maybe when you were in school or in college, you had a teacher or professor and they saw you hanging out with kind of the wrong crowd. And they said, hey, listen, if the crowd ever does something stupid, you should turn and go away. And maybe your peers tried to pressure you into do something you knew was wrong. And so you went the other way and then they got in trouble. And so your faith and your trust to listen to that teacher or that professor or that friend, it protected you from that pain and from that problems. Uh, Maybe you were in a dating relationship and you were about to take it to the next level with him or her and a parent or a friend said, hey, that is danger, you should run. And you listened to them only to discover that your trust in them was to be rewarded because man, you saw how they treated someone else. Your faith protected you and it wasn't even spiritual. And I bet if you're here today and you're a follower of Jesus, I bet all of us have seen faith lead us to uh, overcome life's pain and problems, to protect us, right? And I know this is true for me. Uh, A couple weeks ago, I let everyone know that in in April, my wife and I celebrated 26 years of marriage. Now you need to understand, like I'm a flawed person and she's awesome, she's a saint, but she also has flaws. How have we made it 26 years? How have we overcome the pain and problems of raising kids and working and being together for 26 years? It's because we trust God's goodness and so we obey what he tells us to do and has protected us from pain and problems. But did you know that faith also provides what only God can do? So sometimes when we have faith, it'll overcome the pain and problems by protecting and providing. I bet every single one of us here, regardless of where you're at on faith, I bet we can all think of one thing or one time in our life where we got or experienced something that we never expected. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. Somehow we got something that we didn't deserve that was really good. God provided what only he could do. One of my favorite stories to tell that's true is about South Point's permanent property where we're going to build our first campus on. You see, way back in 2007, we started looking for permanent property and we had a couple of things that we really valued. We wanted to be strategic. We wanted to have room so we could serve the community. We wanted the driving distance to be equal so we could impact as many people as possible. And we found our beautiful piece of property. And if you've ever seen it, it's amazing. So we went to the people that own the property. We offered them $200,000 more than the appraised value, $1.4 million. And you know what they told us? No. And we were really, really sad. We asked them again, no, right? So then we went on about a year and a half, almost two year journey trying to find another piece of property. And we couldn't find it. But then almost two years later, they came back to us after the recession in 2009 and offered us the property. And here's where you're going to be mind blown. We closed on that property and paid $425,000 for the property. We paid $1 million less almost four years later. Faith led God to overcome a problem that we couldn't do by ourselves. And so people will often ask me, Matt, do you believe that God does miracles? And before I answer that question, I always say, please listen to all of my answer. And so I ask you to listen to all of my answer. I absolutely believe that God can still do miracles. However, there's a reason they're called miracles is because they don't happen all the time. And this leads us to the truth number two that the passage teaches us, and it's up here. Sometimes faith will lead us to experience life's pain and problems. You see, just like when we trust God's goodness to protect and provide 
and that will be an outcome. When we trust God's goodness to protect and provide for others, we will experience life, pain, and problem. Matter of fact, I want to suggest to you that experiencing pain and problems is unavoidable. And here's why experiencing pain and problems is unavoidable, even if you have the greatest faith in God. Think about this. We live in a broken world. We can all nod our head. We can go on Facebook, Instagram. We can look at the news, our interaction with people. We'll all go, yep, the world's broken. But not only is the world broken, there are a bunch of busted systems in the world, right? Like we can see systems of injustice, um, inequity, um, of bullying, of like all kinds of things. So not only do we live in a broken world, but we live in a world where there are busted systems. But not only do we live in a broken world with busted systems, all human beings are flawed. That's why at South Point, core value number two is everyone is loved and accepted. And we respect people because there are no perfect people. I'm flawed, you're flawed, we're all flawed. So if we live in a broken world with busted systems and we're all flawed, then pain and problems will be unavoidable, even if we love and follow Jesus, because Jesus calls us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And when we trust God's goodness to provide and protect our neighbors with love, because we live in a broken world, because it's busted, and because we're flawed, we will experience pain and problems. I mean, I want to be really honest with this. David was a great man of faith. You know, he he slew Goliath. But did you know that he was on the run from King Saul for years? Did you know as he got older, his body failed him and he couldn't keep warm? Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah did, right? But in his old age, he got sick and died from his illness. Peter, he walked on water. You want to talk about having faith, but did you know that he was crucified upside down? Think of the apostle Paul. He had amazing faith. He encountered a risen Christ. However, he had an illness and he was also martyred. And you think about the person in history that had the greatest faith, Jesus. I mean, Jesus spoke to the storm and it was instantly calm. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. He spoke to the blind and they saw, and he caused the lame to walk. Yet Jesus didn't get a pass from torture. He didn't get a pass from crucifixion. He didn't get a pass from death. Because the reality is sometimes faith will lead us to experience life, pain, and problems. And I just want to say something. If anyone promises you that if you say yes to Jesus, you get a pass from pain and problems, they are lying and they are selling you something. You see, Jesus's death, his life, and his resurrection weren't to give you and I a pass from our circumstances. Jesus died to give us a pass from our consequences of the sin in our lives. So not a pass from our circumstances, but a pass from our consequences to adopt us back into the family of God. Now listen, I know you're probably watching this and it's easy to get distracted, get a refill, a cup of coffee, or maybe your kids, or maybe you're watching on your phone and someone's texting you. But if you can kind of focus in because I want to kind of, here's the third truth. And if it's the only truth you get, get this one. Faith protects our purpose and isn't about pain or problem avoidance. You see, faith isn't circumstantial. Faith is relational. Faith isn't about the what that happens around us. Do we have good or bad? Do we make the light? Did we get the thing that we want? Faith isn't about circumstances. Faith is relational. It's about not the what, but the who we put our trust in. And I think this is where Jesus, when he says, oh, ye of little faith, looks at us and says, can't you see a God that would die for you is for you? Wouldn't you trust in someone who would show up in a busted and broken world and take my place and your place and our place and conquer hell and death? You can trust in him regardless of the circumstances. See, faith isn't meant to be this Jedi mind trick that we pull over the circumstances. No, faith is meant to protect our purpose. And you might be asking, well, what is our purpose? that this faith protects. And it's this right here. We see this in 1 John and we're gonna put it on the screen. It says, see what great, what is that word is? Love. So if you're, if you're at your computer, just type in love. See what great love. Anyone that would die for you is for you. God created this amazing world and created you so that you would know that there's a God who loves you. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called, what's that word? Children of God. And that's what we are. You see, all of us are meant to be daughters of the Most High or sons of the Most High. The problem is in our own sinfulness, we've decided to rebel against God, go our own way. And God sent Jesus to a 
adopt us back in the family. And here's the greatest news that you and I can know. The empty tomb reminds us that our circumstances don't define us. Jesus does. You see, here's what faith does. It reminds you and I that our purpose is unchanging. Listen, your circumstances don't define how much God loves you. The cross does. Let me say that one more time. The circumstances surrounding your life don't determine how much God loves you. The cross does. I just had a conversation uh, with my dad. Matter of fact, he called me yesterday and we talked for a long uh, time on the phone and we're having a great conversation. He was telling me uh, how proud he was of it. And when my adopted dad tells me how proud he is, I I started to cry and I was thinking about all the knuckle-headed things I've done. Like, if you just want to kind of type like type like X or Y or something in your in your screen to go, yep, I was a knucklehead when you were younger. Like, I was a knucklehead. I did things that hurt my parents. I did things that hurt myself. I did things that hurt other people. And here's the amazing thing. It was never the circumstances around me that caused my parents, adopted mom and dad, they, they never gave up on me. And you want to know why? It's because I belong to them. They claim me as their son. And here's the most amazing thing. There is no circumstance that can undo your purpose in Christ Jesus to be his son or to be his daughter. Now, if I had to sum up the message, I would say it's something like this. Both extremes, trying to use faith to control and then using faith to ignore, both extremes trick us into focusing on our circumstances, right? We begin to look on what's going on around us and not on our purpose. You see, faith isn't circumstantial, it's relational. And here's the greatest thing. You know, last two weeks ago, we got together. One third of the world celebrated the life, the death, the burial, and the empty tomb of Jesus. You see, no matter what happens around us, Christ will define us, not our circumstances. And our purpose is, as sons and daughters of the Most High, we just bring God, we just bring Jesus everywhere we go. We bring up there, down here. I want to close uh, with a true story that I've actually never shared um, either in Young Life or at South Point. And it's about my mother-in-law. Her name was Maureen. Um, And Maureen, I mean, she was a saint. She was one of those people that you meet that you instantly go, like, you are great. Like, she should have been sainted. Uh, She was kind. Um, She was generous. Uh, She was thoughtful. She had a good sense of humor. Uh, She was hardworking. There wouldn't be anything that she wouldn't do for you. And I could see the traits that she passed into her four daughters, the youngest being my wife, Stephanie. Unfortunately, Maureen got cancer. And I went to one of those churches where we kind of held an extreme belief about faith. The kind of extreme thing where we said, if you say it, if you believe it, if you pray for it, if you just, if you just say it enough and think it and believe it, you can control the circumstances. And unfortunately, this beautiful soul, this beautiful woman, my mother-in-law, she passed away from cancer before my wife and I got married while we were, while we were dating. And I'll never forget the devastating impact that that extreme belief about faith had on my wife and on her sisters. Because when you believe that through faith, you can control all the circumstances, that you are somehow a Christian Jedi, when circumstances don't go the way you want, all you're left with is blame. If you're a follower of Jesus and things don't go the way you think they should go, then you either blame yourself or you blame God. And if you're not a follower of Jesus and you look at the busted and brokenness and the circumstances, then you go, there is a God who can't be good. And see, when you and I focus on circumstances and not on the relationship, we will always blame. But here's the amazing thing about my mother-in-law, Maureen, is she was a follower of Jesus. And she shared that and she, she input that into her daughters and especially my wife. And here's the most amazing thing. Her cancer her sickness, the things that she went through in life, even dying didn't change her purpose. She was a daughter of Christ. And here's what I want to let you know. You see, the empty tomb reminds us that our circumstances do not define us, but Jesus defines us. The truth is when people quote, like by his stripes, I'm healed, or all those other verses about God's goodness, she got the ultimate healing. You see, we don't get the full promise on this side of eternity. We get the full promise on the other side of eternity. Her purpose as a daughter of the most high is secure regardless. And so I want to ask you today, When it comes to faith and when it comes to fear, are you trying to use faith to control the circumstances? Are you trying to use faith to ignore the circumstances so that you can just live life however you'd like? My challenge to all of us today would be, instead of trying to use faith, what if we chose faith? What if we understood fear is a legitimate feeling we're all gonna have? But faith can be a response.
What if this week, instead of trying to use faith, we chose faith to fulfill our purpose? What if this week we looked for a way to bring up there, down here? If you heard this and this week you want to try to attempt to choose faith to fulfill your purpose, would you just try purpose in and wherever you're at on your phone, on your laptop, kind of going, hey, listen, I'm not going to try to control things. I'm not going to fall to extremes of faith. I'm going to choose faith to fulfill my purpose as a son or daughter of God because of what Jesus did. Hey, you're not going to want to miss next week. Next week, we're going to talk about what is faith and what does that even look like? So you're not going to want to miss as we go through that. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to close in prayer today. Thank you so much for joining us. Would you pray with me? Hey, God, thank you for reminding us that fear is a feeling and that faith can be a choice. Thank you for leaving us in the Bible a truth that we can experience good and we can experience bad. And that is not an indication of our faith. God, faith isn't about the what's, it's about who we trust in. God, thank you that anyone that would die for us is for us. Thank you that the empty tomb is a reminder and a promise that we can trust in you, that faith is not circumstantial, but relational. God, we put our hope and our trust in you, knowing that our purpose is unchanging, insecure because of what Jesus did, that we are sons and daughters of the God who created everything. Help us to bring up there, down here this week. We pray all this in Jesus' name and all who agreed said amen. God bless.